Hi everybody, welcome to another one of my videos. In this one, I wanted to talk about how when it comes to money, that the Watchtower, oh yeah, they're all about the money. The first area to hit on for sure is, um, touch on I should say, is uh, the donations. Sorry. <laughs> the uh, donations. You know, there's the donation box at all the Kingdom Halls. Uh, I can't remember all of them. There was Congregation, and they had it separated. There was like three, well, there was like categories. Congregation, Worldwide Work. And these were at Kingdom Halls, Assembly Halls, Conventions. And I remember the Convention ones, I, I didn't like those as much just because they always had somebody sit with it, usually a pioneer or a one with privilege, they wouldn't let just anybody do it. I don't know, I just, just having, I understand like they don't want people trying to steal them, but it just made I was always too nervous to, I just didn't like the idea of somebody sitting there. And you know, the donation arrangement that the Watchtower Jehovah's Witnesses have, that was something that did draw me in at first. At the beginning, I did like the idea of voluntary donations. Not having to, I believe the churches, some of them it's called tithing. <laughs> yeah, I do not like the idea of, of tithing. <laughs> It's, but that, I always just loved the idea at the Kingdom Hall that there was no collection plate passed around. Like I didn't have to feel pressured. So I guess for me it was like being drawn in of not having to be pressured or all the, feeling like all they're after is my money. But then many years later I realized the truth of it is they are after your money. They just go about it in different ways from the making you get it to them and give it to them you know you know it's just over the years I noticed sometimes at the meetings we would have these resolutions and I I never objected to what they were doing the only part of that that I objected to was um at the end, they would be like, you know, everybody who's in agreement, put up your hand. But it's a situation, like, where all the members, you have to put up your hand for yes. You can't say no. Plus, I viewed it as basically like a, kind of like a bill. Like, giving each member a bill. Is it, it was such and such an amount from each publisher if they donate this amount every month to go towards this. I didn't like that. I just want to clarify a little bit. I've, <laughs> I'm not greedy about my money. It's just I've never, I've never had a lot of it. I just wanted to push that out there. It's not like I've got, not like I'm loaded and I just don't want to share any. No, it was just more of, my situation has been always just more lack of money. And I think I came to see the, you know what, I came to see the donation arrangement in the Jehovah's Witnesses kind of like charities. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, We've learned with a lot of charities and organizations of where their money really goes and when you donate it. And you know, and you know, one thing, it's I contrast it to the church that I attend now, where I started attending it in about late 2019 about a year after I left the Witnesses. 
it's a united one and they have collection plates where you put in a uh, white envelopes your name your name is on the back of it but the front is white and there's nowhere saying that you have to put the amount you're giving and I like that because even though it's a collection plate it doesn't bother me that my money's in an envelope I'm not going to be looked at by how much I'm giving you know when I've I've never heard our pastor ask for money in his sermons. I have never been pressured for money by them. And I like that. They value me as a person, not just as how much money can you give. And you know, in the witnesses, I very much got the impression over the years that the only way you were going to get real help is if you had, is if you were a pioneer or ministerial servant or elder or an elderly one that's been in the congregation for a few times, for a very long time. Mine had a few. Oh yeah, like they were in there for quite some time so they would always gets, you know, meals, cleaning, shopping done for them. All right! And I did know of a few that were, I did know a few members personally in my congregation that were very depressed and lonely. And one, one of them was actually very depressed that that the elders would never even call them. Like, not even a phone call. Nothing. And it's sad. You know, I've... I know some of the older... I know some of the... Some of the older JW literature talks about examples where brothers and sisters leave food at... at the door of a witness who is going through hard times. I know in congregation I was in at least, I, I knew some who were like that, but never had anything like that happen to them. Unless they were, you know, pioneer, elder. You know, I honestly think that the elders, like, they couldn't care less if you were homeless. It was, <laughs> which is another contrast to the church that I attend now, that every week members of the church come after the service, ask me how I'm doing. Uh, since this pandemic has started, I've gotten phone calls to see how I was doing. And I've even been, here's something that never happened to me as a witness. I have been offered gift cards to grocery stores to help with food if I needed it. And I never knew the Jehovah's Witnesses to do that, at least the congregation I attended. It's just every year at Watchtower is always several ways on. Oh yeah, every year there's always, I remember there's always a Watchtower on several ways you can donate to the organization. I found it kind of disturbing actually. <laughs> I know that seems ridiculous, but it was, it was basically the same information every year that they put out on an annual basis in one of their Watchtowers. And it was um, like you could leave your bank accounts, your homes, any assets, basically anything that would be worth money, you know, instead of to a spouse or a family. <laughs> no, Watchtower wants. No, Watchtower wants it. Who cares about them? 
Uh, they had lots of lots of arrangements and, and ways that you could do this ahead of ahead of time. That was I just thought like, wow, like you're just after the money. That's all you care about. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you know this. Here's something that that did pop up in my head as a. Uh, when I was a witness, but I never really, it was, it was never, it was never a red flag to me at that time. Like it, it bothered me, but it, it, it didn't do that red flag thing back then that, you know, this is definitely not right. But that was the, um, now like you really got to wonder and think that could this organization on a worldwide basis really be getting by and doing everything that they were doing all on voluntary donations you know I doubt it and as I started to do my research in my later years as a witness, I found out I was correct. There are many ways that they also bring in a lot more money. They have various ways that they try to bring in and make money to keep them going. And you know, they've done, and they have done something that they claimed they would never do. Ask for money. Like, like a televangelist, like on JW Broadcasting. You know what, we have more money going out than we have coming in. Cartoons for what, asking kids for their ice cream money. And I, I was... I was aware that historically for decades they used to sell their literature. I believe that stopped in the 80s or 90s. Yes, that's right. When they, when they went door to door, they used to charge a price for the for their magazines. It was a very low price, but still. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm glad I never had to do that. That would have made going door to door so much worse. So, by the way, this isn't free. Yeah, that's going to cost you a few bucks. Um, I I always knew because in the in the library at the Kingdom Hall they had um, they had a bag that that had five cents on it, like a price for the literature. That's how that that didn't shock me. I always knew that. Tote bags, I believe they were. You know what? They're they're bleeding so much money now. They're selling off all their kingdom halls, and I think they're definitely going downhill. A few reasons. I think um, lawsuits and law and losses from in the courts from all these child abuse and pedophile cases, and then. One of my firm beliefs is that is another reason that the older the older ones who are able to donate money are dying off. And I think as over time as more disappear that it's they're not gonna have those bigger donations coming in and that's definitely gonna affect them. And another reason is their growth is in is tending to be in poorer countries that simply cannot donate as much as much money as the richer countries like USA and Canada. And you know what? Like Watchtower likes to spin likes to spin things and you know the end is near the end is near and we're seeing less and less literature okay for one thing that's clearly a way that they're trying to save money but you know just another thing all this downsizing you know 
usually when a company starts downsizing, that's not a good thing. Or that tends to be a sign that they're doing bad, not good. Like, wake up. You know how they've always used volunteers to build and repair all their kingdom halls and assembly halls and building buildings, or in other words, free labor. And now they're selling them off like crazy. They, the Zoom meetings, the Zoom meetings now are in, is a good way to save money because they don't have to pay as much for all the bills to keep the kingdom halls running which I think has enabled them to sell off more Kingdom Halls. And I think it's, yeah, it's just more of a sign that they're, that they're losing money and going downhill. You know what, it's so, it's so good, I want to say it again, since when has downsizing been a good thing? You know, usually when a company does that, like a store reduces its locations, that's usually a sign that they're not doing so well. It's, I find it interesting to, to see and pathetic, kind of too, that how Watchtower tries to spin it into a good thing. But you know, that that's really what they're all about. You know, they don't, they don't really care all that much about the members it's just all about the money how much can you donate how much can you support us financially you know you're not going to get a call unless you're unless you're a pioneer or an or an elder or or an elderly one you know it's just <laughs> that's not it should be about the people not the money Anyway, that's all I wanted to bring out for this video. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like. And I hope you guys all have a great week. Thanks. Bye.